Hello, my name is Chad Grimes. I have a new base method ebook out. Uh, I've had some quite a few requests from some of my students and some of the um, other people on the base forums requesting that I make up a uh, little video, short video, of uh, what it is you can learn in my base method book. Uh, there's been some talk about scales versus chord tones and playing and uh, what I call how the old cat bass players played versus the way some of the new players play. I'm going to do a little demonstration of um, the way uh, playing around a scale, concept of a scale, versus the way some of these older guys played uh, around what you call playing through the chord changes. Um, first off, with the scale, uh, it's easy to drop the third for a moment and to just look at uh, the chord from the root and the fifth standpoint. It can help to, uh, this is going to help uh, demonstrate a little bit about the way scalier guys play versus the way some of these old cats approach the bass. So for a moment we're going to look at a scalier uh, way that guys play and I'm just going to, to keep it simple, we're going to start with a C major scale. So of course, uh, here's the C, the D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. Now, if we were playing around the concept of the chords, and what I mean by that is when you're playing music and you're looking at the chord progression above each measure. Those are the changes of this, uh, the chord changes of the song. So if we're removing the third of the chord for a moment uh, and just looking at the root and fifth of the chord, you're going to begin to see the inconsistency of the finger patterns when playing through these changes. So if you're starting, let's say, with a C chord going to a D minor chord, and again, we're going to remove the third and just focus on the root and fifth. So we're going to just call it a D chord for the moment. And then an E chord. Look at the inconsistencies of where the roots and the fifths fall. So uh, the C, we're going to start with the C chord. Here is the root of the C chord, which is a C note. And the fifth of the chord is five notes up from, or five uh, steps up from the, um, the root, which you will end up at G. So you have the root, C, going to the G note, which is the fifth of the chord, of the C chord. And I'll play that again, root, C, and fifth of the chord, which is G. You can see where the root is and where you go over diagonally, down a string and over diagonally, you can see where the fifth of the chord is. But now when you go to a D minor chord, and again we're going to drop the, the, the minor third, we're just going to play the root and fifth, watch where the root is. D, and A is the fifth of that chord, you have to go to the A note. C chord and the fifth, you can see a different finger pattern to get the same root fifth of the next chord. Then you have the E and its fifth, the B. So there's some consistency there. But now when you add the thirds into the chord, the major third for the C and the minor third for the D minor, and the minor third for the E minor, those three chords uh, could be three simultaneous chords in any song and watch the inconsistency of the fingers. C, the major third E, and G. Then you have another pattern, D, F, minor third of the D minor chord, and A. E minor, root, minor third, fifth. Those are three different finger patterns. And if you're just looking at the minor chord alone, D, F, A, E, G, B, those were two minor chords. 
chords with two different fingerings. Again, there's nothing wrong with this, but the way uh, what I call these old cat bass players, all of our heroes from the past, they wanted consistent finger patterns. Uh, there's the phrase, if you're thinking, you're stinking. And uh, this is what they didn't want to do. They wanted uh, to follow finger patterns and formulas around the chord changes that would be consistent, consistent so they wouldn't have to uh, overthink things. And I'm going to demonstrate now how they approach the instrument. And again, I'm going to, uh, going to keep this in simple ground level uh, terms and concepts here. But the way the older heroes of, uh, 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 approach this instrument is this way. If you watch old videos of uh, bass players of the past, you see their hands moving up and down the neck. They're not in some stagnant uh, scale position. There you see quite often their hands are moving up and uh, down the neck of the instrument. They're doing this, they're playing with the chord, through the chord changes, they understand the chord that's above each measure of the song, even if they're not reading music, they know these chord changes, and they're getting to these chord zones. So if we're just breaking this down and looking at diatonic chords that belong to the uh, key of C major, they would not approach it in some stagnant uh, position play. They're going to move up and down the neck, and you're going to see the consistency of the finger patterns. So if you're uh, starting with the C major scale, and I'm going to just do the roots and the fifths again, uh, not the C major scale, excuse me, if you're going to play around the C chord, going to a D chord, and then through an E chord, we're just going to start with the roots and the fifths. You're going to see the consistent finger patterns. So once again, here is our C chord, C, and it's fifth, G. Moving to a D chord, its root, and its fifth. You can see the exact same finger pattern. Moving to the E chord, root, and its fifth. Now let's compare tones uh, and notes from the scalar position versus moving up and down the neck with the chord changes. Of course we still have our C chord, C, down here, and G chord, and instead of playing with the ring finger D and going to the A here, we instead play the A here. Same note. What are you gaining by playing this way? You're gaining a familiar, organized finger pattern that remains the same. This is the way the old cats, as I call it, played. They wanted familiar uh, things that when they play the root, they know their fifth is always going to be here. There's also the lower fifth here. But again, to keep this simple, we're just going to focus on the higher fifth. Root will always be here. Five of the chord will always be here. And the octave root above. So these are chord zones they get to. Now. With, we're going to add the major third in, and we're going to play all of the diatonic chords in the key of C major, but we're going to play it the way they approach the instrument, moving up and down the neck. So, um, your major third, and let's uh, get into that a little bit, major third versus uh, a minor third. Um, when you're playing the root, your major third is always going to be down, the next string down, diagonally one fret over. No matter if I move here, D, its major third is going to be here. E, its major third is going to be here. F, its major third is going to be here. Consistent finger patterns. The minor third from the root, again starting on the C, you will count over two frets, one, two, and on the third fret over, there is your minor third, an E flat. You can also get the E flat, I know, down to the next string, but when you're going to the fifth, there's a wide leap. So I like to get my minor thirds here because when I play the fifth, it's right there. So again, uh, what the D minor and the E minor are both minor chord uh, chords, so they have consistent finger patterns when you move up the neck.
root for the D minor, minor third F, and the fifth A. Now when you're moving to the E minor chord, same finger pattern, E minor, E, root, G minor third, and B, the fifth of the chord. Same finger pattern, D, going over three frets, down to the fifth, going to the root of the E minor, over three, minor third to the fifth. Same finger patterns. So if you, again, if you're comparing this from a scalar point of playing, you have the root of the D minor here, the F, the A, this minor chord, E minor, G, is a different finger pattern. So again, there's nothing wrong, you know, you, you will at times play, you know, certain positions of chords, but again, this video is to lay the groundwork of uh, the way these older cat, or all, all of our older bass heroes approach the instrument, up and down the neck. Uh, diatonic uh, keys, chords to the key, I'm going to uh, demonstrate the entire uh, chords that make up a C major key signature. So of course we're starting with C major, root, third, fifth, D minor, D, F, A, E minor, E, same finger pattern as the D minor. G, B, F major, same finger pattern as the C, because it's a major chord. F, A, C, and G, G, A, or B, sorry, G, B, and D. and E and B minor 7 uh, well B minor in the terms of just triadic chords B D and F and uh, I'd say a lowered fifth uh, uh, I guess uh, B diminished B, D, and F, and then that brings you back to C. Now again, as you approach uh, and as you move farther into my ebook, of course you're not going to just move up the neck and see just the roots on the third string. Uh, instead of playing the A minor here, A, C, E, I could have played the A minor here in this lower, A, C, E, or if I wanted the same octave uh, range of the notes, instead of the A here, I could have played the A here, A, C, E. But the finger patterns are consistent, and this is the way these old masters approached the instrument. They liked the consistency of fingers, the fingerings, and you don't have to overthink and we're taught that scales make things easier, and it's not. They don't have the same consistent fingering pattern. Plus, when you deal with scales, you emphasize uh, the scales as being more important. In the key of C, let's uh, say, C gets the weight that is always the, the, the root, the tonic of the, of the key. But when you're dealing with uh, more complex music like jazz music, uh, for instance, you're going to have a whole lot of other chords borrowed from other key signatures. So you're not going to always have diatonic chords uh, in one particular song. You're going to have chords that are borrowed from other keys. So what the scale people do is they always co uh, compensate. They'll say something like, uh, it's just a Dorian scale with a raised four and, and things like that. And, and again, when you go back to scales, if you're in the key of C, they put so much emphasis on C being the tonic 
uh, and that's not the case. Music is, uh, what I say, is the chord you are under at the moment. So yes, yeah, C is going to be the root and the tonic when you're in the, under a C chord, but, uh, and it's considered a, the, you know, D is considered the second. But when you're in, on a D, under a D minor chord in the music, D is now the root. And it's going to sound like the root of a D minor chord, not, not necessarily the second degree of a C scale um, dealing with uh, the, C, the key signature. So they didn't think of all these terms about key signatures, especially the more comp, uh, complex music they played. They got to their chord zones, they knew the, the chord uh, that they were under at the moment, and they played through the changes. They knew their chord tones, uh, if they were under E minor, then E, G, and B would be what they considered the sweet notes, the chord tones. These are the notes you emphasize when you're under an E minor. Now this is, uh, the other confusion is, uh, I get told that, well, can't you play other uh, non-chord tones or other scale degrees, they say. Of course, when you're under the E minor chord, uh, for an example, E, G, and B are your chord tones, but you can get there and arrive and, uh, and play non-chord tones around that just as long as you emphasize the chord tones. Um, so if I want to get to a G and have a passing tone, E, F, G, you can do that in music. Just because you're under the E minor chord, you can add the non-chord tones in. The other thing that scale people uh, tend not to do is take advantage of the chromatics. You're, they're so a slave to the key signature, they think that if you're in the key of C major, you, you can't use any sharps or flats. Again, as long as you are emphasizing the chord tones of a chord, you can throw in chromatics, you can throw in sharps. If I went up under an E minor, I can play an F sharp to the G. Just as long as I emphasize the chord tones on the strong beats and the weak beats, you can put in these chromatic tones. Even if the key signature of the music has no sharps or flats, it doesn't matter. And this is why theory, theory, music theorists go back uh, through a piece and fig, trying to figure out while, how Miles Davis or Coltrane used a sharp in a key signature that has no sharps or flats. Because these guys knew their chord changes, they knew their chord tones of the chord they were under at the moment, and they were free to add these other notes uh, for different colors. But they didn't look at it in terms of oh, he's playing a Phrygian scale with a, a raised 11th. They didn't, they didn't think in terms of that. So hopefully this clarifies it up. I have a link that will be provided with this video below. Uh, I may be able to embed it in the video. I'm not sure, but it will definitely be below. Uh, and if you are interested in exploring more of these concepts of how these old bass players play, uh, click the link and uh, buy the ebook. Thank you.